I'm Claire Dowding, I'm a reader at All Saints Blackheath and I'm also the Diocesan Warden of Readers. May I speak in the name of the Living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Geographically speaking, the Gospel readings during this season of Epiphany have been somewhat all over the place, starting in Jerusalem and Bethlehem at Epiphany, then travelling via Jesus' baptism on the banks of the River Jordan between Jerusalem and the Sea of Galilee, to the wider Galilee area where Nathanael was called and the wedding was celebrated at Cana. And in today's reading, Jesus and his disciples are now on the shores of the Sea of Galilee at Capernaum. In these weeks, the Gospel readings have travelled about 120 miles, but having started in the place where he was born, 30 years later, we, and Jesus, are now in the area which is viewed as his home. In the account of his baptism, Jesus is described as coming from Nazareth of Galilee. Before Nathanael speaks with Jesus, he disparagingly asks, can anything good come from Nazareth? And Cana is close enough to Nazareth for Mary not just to be able to attend a wedding there, but to be able to stay long enough for the wine to run out. So these different passages, some from John's Gospel and some from Mark's, clearly show that at the start of his ministry, Jesus is very much operating on his home turf. Maybe that's a little widely defined, but it's still broadly the area which he knows and where people know him. Which may help to explain some of the surprise expressed by Jesus' readers when he speaks in the synagogue in Capernaum on the Sabbath. This is someone from just down the road. He's the son of a carpenter. He's not supposed to be better at expounding the scriptures than the people who are trained at it. And the area where someone grew up, the place where, where they are known within their community, can sometimes be the hardest place for someone to be called to serve God by serving, leading and teaching others. Being well known, possibly too well known, by those around you as you step up into a new role isn't always easy. The traditional model for the majority of those who are called to ordained ministry, although of course not for everyone, is to go from their sending parish via some years of training elsewhere to serve in a different parish after ordination. Hopefully they will come to feel settled in that place but it won't usually be exactly where they themselves grew up or grew to faith. This doesn't tend to be the case though for those who are called by God to be lay ministers, whether that's as readers, as youth or children's workers, as spas or in other kinds of non-ordained ministry. We, and I speak as a reader, as a licensed lay minister, we are almost always called from within our own church community to serve that community, to continue on our own journey of faith with the same companions that we've been walking with up until now, but relating to them in a different way as we carry on along the road. Different opportunities may also present themselves as we obey God's call, which may take us away from our home communities for a season. But in essence, the starting point is also the destination, to be with a particular group of God's people as we do our best together to hear God's words to us. And of course, the idea of people being called from within a community to share God's words with that community isn't new. In the passage from Deuteronomy, we see that as Moses comes to the end of his life and tries to prepare the people of Israel for what happens next, the people aren't yet ready to engage with God themselves, but they still need someone to speak to God for them and to speak to them on God's behalf. God therefore promises that they will have another prophet to live among them, to speak God's words to them and to help them live as God's people as they move into the promised land. Now, the role and the calling of a prophet can often be misunderstood with a lot of focus on predicting or foretelling the future. Archbishop Rowan Williams, in his book, Being Christian, 
points out that as shown in the Hebrew scriptures, prophets, and this is what he says, act and speak to call the people of Israel back to their own essential truth and identity. And that they do this, again, these are his words, for the sake of a community's integrity, its faithfulness to who it is really meant to be. Now, this comment is part of Archbishop Rowan's consideration of what it means to be baptised, to be part of God's family as a Christian. So being a prophet is a role to which any or all of us may potentially be called. Now, the Diocese of Southwark doesn't yet affirm, commission or licence prophets, at least not under that name. But this season of lay ministries is an opportunity to raise awareness of the different kinds of formal lay ministry which are encouraged and supported in the diocese. Recognising that God may be calling you in some way to stand up, to speak out, to lead and to serve in your own community can be scary but it can also be a way of God working, not just in individuals, but in the whole of the community of which those individuals are part, as the challenge to the community to be what it is meant to be, as Archbishop Rowan says, and as that challenge is both made and accepted. Now, there's no expectation that we'll all be able to cast out demons, but by the grace of God and with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we too can follow our calling to speak with authority of the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen.